Baghdad. Baghdad is the capital of Iraq. The population of Baghdad is approximately 8,765,000, making it the largest city in Iraq, the second largest city in the Arab world, after Cairo, Egypt, and the second largest city in Western Asia, after Tehran, Iran. Located along the Tigris River, the city was founded in the 8th century and became the capital of the Abbasid Caliphate. Within a short time of its inception, Baghdad evolved into a significant cultural, commercial, and intellectual center for the Islamic world. This, in addition to housing several key academic institutions, for example, House of Wisdom, garnered the city a worldwide reputation as the center of learning. Baghdad was the largest city of the Middle Ages for much of the Abbasid era peaking at a population of more than a million. The city was largely destroyed at the hands of the Mongol Empire in 1258, resulting in a decline that would linger through many centuries due to frequent plagues and multiple successive empires. With the recognition of Iraq as an independent state, formerly the British Mandate of Mesopotamia, in 1938, Baghdad gradually regained some of its former prominence as a significant center of Arab culture. In contemporary times, the city has often faced severe infrastructural damage, most recently due to the 2003 invasion of Iraq, and the subsequent Iraq war that lasted until December 2011. In recent years, the city has been frequently subjected to insurgency attacks. The war had resulted in a substantial loss of cultural heritage and historical artifacts as well. Baghdad was listed as one of the least hospitable places in the world to live, and was ranked by Mercer as worst of 221 major cities as measured by quality of life. The name Baghdad is pre-Islamic, and its origin is disputed. The site where the city of Baghdad developed has been populated for millennia. By the 8th century AD, several villages had developed there, including a Persian hamlet called Baghdad, the name which would come to be used for the Abbasid metropolis. Arab authors, realizing the pre-Islamic origins of Baghdad's name, generally looked for its roots in Persian. They suggested various meanings, the most common of which was bestowed by God. Modern scholars generally tend to favor this etymology, which views the word as a compound of Bog, God and Dad, given, in Old Persian the first element can be traced to Boghu and is related to Slavic Bog God, while the second can be Trased Dodadadi. A similar term in Middle Persian is the name Mithradat, Myrdad in New Persian, known in English by its Hellenistic form Mithridates, meaning gift of Mithra, Dad is the more archaic form of Dad, related to Latin Dad and English donor. There are a number of other locations in the wider region whose names are compounds of the word Bog, including Boglan and Bagram in Afghanistan or a village called Bogsan in Iran. The name of the town Baghdadi in Georgia shares the same etymological origins. A few authors have suggested older origins for the name, in particular the name Baghdadju or Hudadju that existed in Old Babylonian, spelled with a signed hat can represent both Bag and Hu, and the Babylonian Talmudic name of a place called Baghdatha. Some scholars suggested Aramaic derivations. When the Abbasid Caliph, al-Mansur, founded a completely new city for his capital, he chose the name Madinat al-Salam or City of Peace. This was the official name on coins, weights, and other official usage, although the common people continued to use the old name. By the 11th century, Baghdad became almost the exclusive name for the world renowned metropolis. After the fall of the Umayyads, the first Muslim dynasty, the victorious Abbasid rulers wanted their own capital from which they could rule. They chose a site north of the Sassanid capital of Tesaphon, and also just north of where ancient Babylon had once stood, and on 30th of July 762 the Caliph al-Mansur commissioned the construction of the city. It was built under the supervision of the Barmakids. Mansur believed that Baghdad was the perfect city to be the capital of the Islamic Empire under the Abbasids. Mansur loved this site so much he is quoted saying, this is indeed the city that I am to found, where I am to live, and where my descendants will reign afterward. The city's growth was helped by its excellent location, based on at least two factors, it had control over strategic and trading routes along the Tigris, and it had an abundance of water in a dry climate. Water exists on both the north and south ends of the city, allowing all households to have a plentiful supply, which was very uncommon during this time. Baghdad eclipsed Tesaphon the capital of the Sasanians, which was located some to the southeast. Today, all that remains of Tesaphon is the shrine town of Salman Pak, just to the south of Greater Baghdad. Tesaphon itself had replaced and absorbed Seleucia, the first capital of the Seleucid Empire, which had earlier replaced the city of Babylon.
Ibn. According to the traveler Ibn Battuta, Baghdad was one of the largest cities, not including the damage it has received. The residents are mostly Hanbal. Baghdad is also home to the grave of Abu Hanifa where there is a cell and a mosque above it. The Sultan of Baghdad, Abu Said Bahadur Khan, was a Tartar king who embraced Islam. In its early years, the city was known as a deliberate reminder of an expression in the Quran, when it refers to paradise. It took four years to build, 764 to 768. Mansur assembled engineers, surveyors, and art constructionists from around the world to come together and draw plans for the city. Over 100,000 construction workers came to survey the plans, many were distributed salaries to start the building of the city. July was chosen as the starting time because two astrologers, Nabuk Dehvazi and Mashala, believed that the city should be built under the sign of the lion, Leo. Leo is associated with fire and symbolizes productivity, pride, and expansion. The bricks used to make the city were on all four sides. Abu Hanifa was the counter of the bricks and he developed a canal which brought water to the worksite for both human consumption and the manufacture of the bricks. Marble was also used to make buildings throughout the city, and marble steps led down to the river's edge. The basic framework of the city consists of two large semicircles about in diameter. The city was designed as a circle about in diameter, leading it to be known as the Round City. The original design shows a single ring of residential and commercial structures along the inside of the city walls but the final construction added another ring inside the first. Within the city there were many parks, gardens, villas, and promenades. In the center of the city lay the mosque, as well as headquarters for guards. The purpose or use of the remaining space in the center is unknown. The circular design of the city was a direct reflection of the traditional Persian Sasanian urban design. The Sasanian city of Gur and Fars, built 500 years before Baghdad, is nearly identical in its general circular design, radiating avenues, and the government buildings and temples at the center of the city. This style of urban planning contrasted with ancient Greek and Roman urban planning, in which cities are designed as squares or rectangles with streets intersecting each other at right angles. The four surrounding walls of Baghdad were named Kufa, Basra, Khorasan, and Syria named because their gates pointed in the directions of these destinations. The distance between these gates was a little less than. Each gate had double doors that were made of iron, the doors were so heavy it took several men to open and close them. The wall itself was about 44 meters thick at the base and about 12 meters thick at the top. Also, the wall was 30 meters high, which included merlins, a solid part of an embattled parapet usually pierced by embrasures. This wall was surrounded by another wall with a thickness of 50 meters. The second wall had towers and rounded merlins, which surrounded the towers. This outer wall was protected by a solid glassy, which is made out of bricks and quicklime. Beyond the outer wall was the water filled moat. The Golden Gate Palace, the residence of the caliph and his family, was in the middle of Baghdad, in the central square. In the central part of the building, there was a green dome that was 39 meters high. Surrounding the palace was an esplanade a waterside building, in which only the caliph could come riding on horseback. In addition, the palace was near other mansions and officers' residences. Near the gate of Syria, a building served as the home for the guards. It was made of brick and marble. The palace governor lived in the latter part of the building on the commander of the guards in the front. In 813, after the death of Caliph Al-Amin, the palace was no longer used as the home for the caliph and his family. The roundness points to the fact that it was based on Arabic script. The two designers who were hired by Al-Mansur to plan the city's design were Naubacht, a Zoroastrian who also determined that the date of the foundation of the city would be astrologically auspicious, and Mashallah, a Jew from Khorasan, Iran. The justification for the Abbasid Caliphate was based on the Abbasids being the descendants of the uncle of Muhammad and being part of the Quraysh tribe. They used Shia resentment, Khorasanian movement, and appeals to the ambitions and traditions of the newly conquered Persian aristocracy to overthrow Thumawais. The Abbasids sought to combine the hegemony of the Arab tribes with the imperial, court, ceremonial, and administrative structures of the Persians. The Abbasids considered themselves the inheritors of Arab Islamic culture. Harun al-Rashid needed to place the capital in a place that was representative of Arab Islamic identity and built the House of Wisdom, where ancient texts were translated from their original language, such as Greek, to Arabic. al mamun is credited with the translation movement for this. Within a generation of its founding, Baghdad became a hub of learning and commerce. Beit al hikmah or the House of Wisdom, initially founded as a library for private use by Harun al-Rashid, 
flourished into an unrivaled intellectual center of science, medicine, philosophy, and education and had the largest selection of books in the world by the middle of the 9th century. Baghdad was likely the largest city in the world from shortly after its foundation until the 930s, when it tied with Cordoba. Several estimates suggest that the city contained over a million inhabitants at its peak. Many of the 1001 Nights tales, widely known as the Arabian Nights, are set in Baghdad during this period. Among the notable features of Baghdad during this period were its exceptional libraries. Many of the Abbasid caliphs were patrons of learning and enjoyed collecting both ancient and contemporary literature. Although some of the princes of the previous Umayyad dynasty had begun to gather and translate Greek scientific literature, the Abbasids were the first to foster Greek learning on a large scale. Many of these libraries were private collections intended only for the use of the owners and their immediate friends, but the libraries of the caliphs and other officials soon took on a public or a semi-public character. Four great libraries were established in Baghdad during this period. The earliest was that of the famous Al Mamun who was caliph from 813 to 833. Another was established by Sabur ibn Ardashir in 991 or 993 for the literary men and scholars who frequented his academy. Unfortunately, this second library was plundered and burned by the Seljuks only 70 years after it was established. This was a good example of the sort of library built up out of the needs and interests of a literary society. The last two were examples of madrasa or theological college libraries. The Nizamiya was founded by the Persian Nizam al-Mulk, who was vizier of two early Seljuk sultans. It continued to operate even after the coming of the Mongols in 1258. The Mustan Ziriya Madrasa, which owned an exceedingly rich library, was founded by al-Mustan Sir, the second last Abbasid caliph, who died in 1242. This would prove to be the last great library built by the caliphs of Baghdad. By the 10th century, the city's population was between 1.2 million and 2 million. Baghdad's early meteoric growth eventually slowed due to troubles within the caliphate, including relocations of the capital to Samarra, during 808 to 819 and 836 to 892, the loss of the western and easternmost provinces, and periods of political domination by the Iranian Buyids, 945 to 1055, and Seljuk Turks, 1055 to 1135. The Seljuks were a clan of the Oghuz Turks from Central Asia that converted to the Sunni branch of Islam. In 1040, they destroyed the Goths Navids, taking over their land and in 1055, Tufrul Beg, the leader of the Seljuks, took over Baghdad. The Seljuks expelled the Baid dynasty of Shiites that had ruled for some time and took over power and control of Baghdad. They ruled as sultans in the name of the Abbasid Caliphs, they saw themselves as being part of Abbasid regime. Tufrulbeg saw himself as the protector of the Abbasid Caliphs. Sieges and wars in which Baghdad was involved are listed below. In 1058, Baghdad was captured by the Fatimids under the Turkish general Abul Harit Arslan al Basasiri, an adherent of the Ismailis along with the UK led Quraysh. Not long before the arrival of the Saluks in Baghdad, al Basasiri petitioned to the Fatimid Imam Caliph al Mustansir to support him in conquering Baghdad on the Ismaili Imam's behalf. It has recently come to light that the famed Fatimidai, al muway al-Shirazi, had a direct role in supporting al basasiri and helped the general to succeed in taking Mosul, Wasit, and Kufa. Soon after, by December 1058, a Shi'ab on, call to prayer, was implemented in Baghdad and a Kutba, sermon, was delivered in the name of the Fatimid Imam Caliph. Despite his Shi'i inclinations, al basasiri received support from Sunnis and Shi'is alike for whom opposition to the Saluk power was a common factor. On February 10, 1258, Baghdad was captured by the Mongols led by Hulgu, a grandson of Chinggis Khan, Genghis Khan, during the siege of Baghdad. Many quarters were ruined by fire, siege, or looting. The Mongols massacred most of the city's inhabitants, including the Caliph al Mustavisim, and destroyed large sections of the city. The canals and dikes forming the city's irrigation system were also destroyed. During this time, in Baghdad, Christians and Shia were tolerated, while Sunnis were treated as enemies. The sack of Baghdad put an end to the Abbasid Caliphate. It has been argued that this marked an end to the Islamic Golden Age and served a blow from which Islamic civilization never fully recovered. At this point, Baghdad was ruled by the Ilkhanate, a breakaway state of the Mongol Empire, ruling from Iran. In 1401, Baghdad was again sacked, by the Central Asian Turkic conqueror Timur, Tamerlane. When his forces took Baghdad, he spared almost no one, 
and ordered that each of his soldiers bring back two severed human heads. Baghdad became a provincial capital controlled by the Mongol Jalayarid, 1400-1411, Turkic Kara Koyunlu, 1411-1469, Turkic AK Koyunlu, 1469-1508, and the Iranian Safavid, 1508-1534, dynasties. In 1534, Baghdad was captured by the Ottoman Turks. Under the Ottomans, Baghdad continued into a period of decline, partially as a result of the enmity between its rulers and Iranian Safavids, which did not accept the Sunni control of the city. Between 1623 and 1638, it returned to Iranian rule before falling back into Ottoman hands. Baghdad has suffered severely from visitations of the plague and cholera, and sometimes two-thirds of its population has been wiped out. For a time, Baghdad had been the largest city in the Middle East. The city saw relative revival in the latter part of the 18th century under a Mamluk government. Direct Ottoman rule was reimposed by Ali Reza Pasha in 1831. From 1851 to 1852 and from 1861 to 1867, Baghdad was governed, under the Ottoman Empire by Mehmed Nemk Pasha. The Nadal Encyclopedia reports the 1907 population of Baghdad is 185,000. Baghdad and southern Iraq remained under Ottoman rule until 1917, when captured by the British during World War I. In 1920, Baghdad became the capital of the British Mandate of Mesopotamia and after receiving independence in 1932, the capital of the Kingdom of Iraq. The city's population grew from an estimated 145,000 in 1900 to 580,000 in 1950. During the Mandate, Baghdad's substantial Jewish community comprised a quarter of the city's population. On April 1, 1941, members of the Golden Square and Rashid Ali staged a coup in Baghdad. Rashid Ali installed a pro-German and pro-Italian government to replace the pro-British government of Regent Abdullah. On 31 May, after the resulting Anglo-Iraqi war and after Rashid Ali and his government had fled, the mayor of Baghdad surrendered to British and Commonwealth forces. On July 14, 1958, members of the Iraqi army, under Abd al-Karim Qasim, staged a coup to topple the Kingdom of Iraq. King Faisal II, former Prime Minister Nuri as said, former Regent Prince Abd al members of the royal family, and others were brutally killed during the coup. Many of the victims' bodies were then dragged through the streets of Baghdad. During the 1970s, Baghdad experienced a period of prosperity and growth because of a sharp increase in the price of petroleum, Iraq's main export. New infrastructure including modern sewerage, water, and highway facilities were built during this period. The master plans of the city, 1967-1973, were delivered by the Polish planning office Maestro Project Krakow, mediated by Pole Service. However, the Iran-Iraq War of the 1980s was a difficult time for the city, as money was diverted by Saddam Hussein to the army and thousands of residents were killed. Iran launched a number of missile attacks against Baghdad in retaliation for Saddam Hussein's continuous bombardments of Tehran's residential districts. In 1991 and 2003, the Gulf War and the 2003 invasion of Iraq caused significant damage to Baghdad's transportation, power, and sanitary infrastructure as U.S.-led coalition forces launched massive aerial assaults in the city in the two wars. Also in 2003, the minor riot in the city which took place on 21st of July, caused some disturbance in the population. The historic Assyrian quarter of the city, Dora, which boasted a population of 150,000 Assyrians in 2003, made up over 3% of the capital's Assyrian population then. The community has been subject to kidnappings, death threats, vandalism, and house burnings by al-Qaeda and other insurgent groups. As of the end of 2014, only 1,500 Assyrians remained in Dora. Points of interest include the National Museum of Iraq whose priceless collection of artifacts was looted during the 2003 invasion, and the iconic hands of Victoria Arches. Multiple Iraqi parties are in discussions as to whether the arches should remain as historical monuments or be dismantled. Thousands of ancient manuscripts in the National Library were destroyed under Saddam's command. Mutain Abbey Street, Arabic, is located near the old quarter of Baghdad, at Al Rashid Street. It is the historic center of Baghdadi bookselling, a street filled with bookstores and outdoor bookstalls. 
It was named after the 10th century classical Iraqi poet al Mutanabi. This street is well established for book selling and has often been referred to as the heart and soul of the Baghdad literacy and intellectual community. The zoological park used to be the largest in the Middle East. Within eight days following the 2003 invasion, however, only 35 of the 650 animals in the facility survived. This was a result of theft of some animals for human food, and starvation of caged animals that had no food. South African Lawrence Anthony and some of the zookeepers cared for the animals and fed the carnivores with donkeys they had bought locally. Eventually, L. Paul Bremer, director of the Coalition Provisional Authority in Iraq from May 11, 2003 to June 28, 2004, ordered protection of the zoo and U.S. engineers helped to reopen the facility. Grand Festivities Square is the main square where public celebrations are held and is also the home to three important monuments commemorating Iraqis' fallen soldiers and victories in war, namely Al Shahid Monument, the Victory Arch, and the Unknown Soldiers Monument. Al Shahid Monument, also known as the Martyrs Memorial, is a monument dedicated to the Iraqi soldiers who died in the Iran Iraq War. However, now it is generally considered by Iraqis to be for all of the martyrs of Iraq, especially those allied with Iran and Syria currently fighting ISIS, not just of the Iran-Iraq War. The monument was opened in 1983, and was designed by the Iraqi architect Saman Kamal and the Iraqi sculptor and artist Ismail Fatah al-Turk. During the 1970s and 1980s, Saddam Hussein's government spent a lot of money on new monuments, which included the Al-Shahid Monument. Shla, or Kwaishla is a public square in the historical complex located in Rusafa neighborhood at the riverbank of Tigris. Kshla and its surroundings is where the historical features and cultural capitals of Baghdad are concentrated, from the Mutain Abbey Street, Abbasid Era Palace and Bridges, Ottoman Era Mosques to the Mustanzariya Madrasa. The square developed during the Ottoman Era as a military barracks. Today, it is a place where the citizens of Baghdad find leisure such as reading poetry and gazebos. It is characterized by the iconic clock tower which was donated by George V. The entire area is currently submitted to the UNESCO World Heritage Site tentative list. al Qadi Miya Masjid is a shrine that is located in the Qadi main suburb of Baghdad. It contains the tombs of the 7th and 9th 12er Shiite Imams, Musa al Qadim and Muhammad at Taki respectively, upon whom the title of Qasimain, two who swallow their anger was bestowed. Many Shiites traveled to the mosque from faraway places to commemorate. Adhamiya is a predominantly Sunni area with a masjid that is associated with the Sunni Imam Abu Hanifa. The name of Alazamiya is derived from Abu Hanifa's title, Al Imam Al Azam, the Great Imam. Ferdos Square is a public open space in Baghdad and the location of two of the best known hotels, the Palestine Hotel and the Sheraton Ishtar, which are both also the tallest buildings in Baghdad. The square was the site of the statue of Saddam Hussein that was pulled down by U.S. coalition forces in a widely televised event during the 2003 invasion of Iraq. Administratively, Baghdad Governorate is divided into districts which are further divided into sub-districts. Municipally, the Governorate is divided into nine municipalities, which have responsibility for local issues. Regional services, however, are coordinated and carried out by a mayor who oversees the municipalities. There is no single city council that singularly governs Baghdad at a municipal level. The Governorate Council is responsible for the Governorate wide policy. These official subdivisions of the city served as administrative centers for the delivery of municipal services but until 2003 had no political function. Beginning in April 2003, the U.S. controlled Coalition Provisional Authority, CPA, began the process of creating new functions for these. The process initially focused on the election of neighborhood councils and the official neighborhoods, elected by neighborhood caucuses. The CPA convened a series of meetings in each neighborhood to explain local government, to describe the caucus election process and to encourage participants to spread the word and bring friends, relatives and neighbors to subsequent meetings. Each neighborhood process ultimately ended with a final meeting where candidates for the new neighborhood councils identified themselves and asked their neighbors to vote for them. Once all 88, later increased to 89, neighborhood councils were in place, each neighborhood council elected representatives from among their members to serve on one of the city's nine district councils. 
The number of neighborhood representatives on a district council is based upon the neighborhood's population. The next step was to have each of the nine district councils elect representatives from their membership to serve on the 37 member Baghdad City Council. This three tier system of local government connected the people of Baghdad to the central government through their representatives from the neighborhood, through the district, and up to the city council. The same process was used to provide representative councils for the other communities in Baghdad province outside of the city itself. There, local councils were elected from 20 neighborhoods, Nahia, and these councils elected representatives from their members to serve on six district councils. Kata. As within the city, the district councils then elected representatives from among their members to serve on the 35 member Baghdad Regional Council. The first step in the establishment of the system of local government for Baghdad province was the election of the Baghdad Provincial Council. As before, the representatives to the provincial council were elected by their peers from the lower councils in numbers proportional to the population of the districts they represent. The 41 member provincial council took office in February 2004 and served until national elections held in January 2005, when a new provincial council was elected. This system of 127 separate councils may seem overly cumbersome, however, Baghdad province is home to approximately 7 million people. At the lowest level, the neighborhood councils, each council represents an average of 75,000 people. The nine district advisory councils, DAC, are as follows. The nine districts are subdivided into 89 smaller neighborhoods which may make up sectors of any of the districts above. The following is a selection, rather than a complete list, of these neighborhoods. The city is located on a vast plain bisected by the Tigris River. The Tigris splits Baghdad in half, with the eastern half being called Rise F.A. and the western Hay known as Kark. The land on which the city is built is almost entirely flat and low-lying, being of alluvial origin due to the periodic large floods which have occurred on the river. Baghdad has a subtropical desert climate, Kutbin climate classification BWH, featuring extremely hot, dry summers and mild, damp winters. In the summer, from June through August, the average maximum temperature is as high as, accompanied by blazing sunshine. Rainfall has, in fact, been recorded on fewer than half a dozen occasions at this time of year and has never exceeded. Even at night, temperatures in summer are seldom below. Baghdad's record highest temperature of 124 degrees Fahrenheit, 51 degrees Celsius, was reached in July 2015. The humidity is typically under 50% in summer due to Baghdad's distance from the marshy southern Iraq and the coasts of Persian Gulf, and dust storms from the deserts to the west are a normal occurrence during the summer. Winters boast temperatures typical of subtropical climates. From December through February, Baghdad has maximum temperatures averaging though highs above are not unheard of. The average January low is, but lows below freezing occur a couple of times per year on average. Annual rainfall, almost entirely confined to the period from November through March, averages approximately, but has been as high as and as low as. On January 11, 2008, light snow fell across Baghdad for the first time in memory. Baghdad's population was estimated at 7.22 million in 2015. The city historically had a predominantly Sunni population, but by the early 21st century around 82% of the city's population were Iraqi Shia. At the beginning of the 21st century, some 1.5 million people migrated to Baghdad, most of them Shiites and a few Sunnis. As early as 2003, about 20% of the population of the city was the result of mixed marriages between Shiites and Sunnis, they are often referred to as Sushis. Following the sectarian violence in Iraq between the Sunni and Shia militia groups during the U.S. occupation of Iraq, the city's population became overwhelmingly Shia. Despite the government's promise to resettle Sunnis displaced by the violence, little has been done to bring this about. The Iraqi civil war following ISIS invasion in 2014 caused hundreds of thousands of Iraqi internally displaced people to flee to the city. The city currently has Sunni, Shia, Assyrian slash Chaldean slash Syriacs, Armenians, and mixed neighborhoods. Baghdad accounts for 22.2% of Iraq's population and 40% of the country's gross domestic product, PPP. Iraqi Airways, the national airline of Iraq, has its headquarters on the grounds of Baghdad International Airport in Baghdad. Al Nasser Airlines has its head office in Karata, Baghdad. Most Iraqi reconstruction efforts have been devoted to the restoration and repair of badly damaged urban infrastructure. More visible efforts at reconstruction through private development, 
Like architect and urban designer Hisham N. Ashkari's Baghdad Renaissance Plan and the Sindbad Hotel Complex and Conference Center have also been made. A plan was proposed by a government agency to rebuild the tourist island in 2008. In late 2009, a construction plan was proposed to rebuild the heart of Baghdad, but the plan was never realized because corruption was involved in it. The Baghdad I, a tall Ferris wheel, was proposed for Baghdad in August 2008. At that time, three possible locations had been identified, but no estimates of cost or completion date were given. Ref name equals msnbc.msn.com ID 26425911 slash ref in October 2008. It was reported that Al Zaira Park was expected to be the site, and a wheel was installed there in March 2011. Iraq's tourism board is also seeking investors to develop a romantic island on the River Tigris in Baghdad that was once a popular honeymoon spot for newlywed Iraqis. The project would include a six-star hotel, spa, an 18-hole golf course and a country club. In addition, the go-ahead has been given to build numerous architecturally unique skyscrapers along the Tigris that would develop the city's financial center in Ketiamaya. In October 2008, the Baghdad Metro resumed service. It connects the center to the southern neighborhood of Dora. In May 2010, a new residential and commercial project nicknamed Baghdad Gate was announced. This project not only addresses the urgent need for new residential units in Baghdad but also acts as a real symbol of progress in the war torn city, as Baghdad has not seen projects of this scale for decades. The Mustan Syria Madrasa was established in 1227 by the Abbasid Caliph al Mustansir. The name was changed to Al Mustanziria University in 1963. The University of Baghdad is the largest university in Iraq and the second largest in the Arab world. Prior to the Gulf War, multiple international schools operated in Baghdad, including Baghdad has always played a significant role in the broader Arab cultural sphere, contributing several significant writers, musicians, and visual artists. Famous Arab poets and singers such as Nizar Gabani, Um Kulthum. Firuz, Salah al Hamdani, Ilham al Madfi, and others have performed for the city. The dialect of Arabic spoken in Baghdad today differs from that of other large urban centers in Iraq, having features more characteristic of nomadic Arabic dialects versus the Arabic language. It is possible that this was caused by the repopulating of the city with rural residents after the multiple sackings of the late Middle Ages. For poetry written about Baghdad, see Reuben Sneer, ed. Baghdad, The City in Verse, Harvard, 2013. Baghdad joined the UNESCO Creative Cities Network as a city of literature in December 2015. Some of the important cultural institutions in the city include the National Theater, which was looted during the 2003 invasion of Iraq, but efforts are underway to restore the theater. The live theater scene received a boost during the 1990s, when UN sanctions limited the import of foreign films. As many as 30 movie theaters were reported to have been converted to live stages, producing a wide range of comedies and dramatic productions. Institutions offering cultural education in Baghdad include the Music and Ballet School of Baghdad and the Institute of Fine Arts Baghdad. The Iraqi National Symphony Orchestra is a government funded symphony orchestra in Baghdad. The insel plays primarily classical European music, as well as original compositions based on Iraqi and Arab instruments and music. Baghdad is also home to a number of museums which housed artifacts and relics of ancient civilization, many of these were stolen, and the museums looted, during the widespread chaos immediately after United States forces entered the city. During the 2003 occupation of Iraq, AFN Iraq, Freedom Radio, Broadcast News and Entertainment within Baghdad, among other locations. There is also a private radio station called Dijla, named after the Arabic word for the Tigris River, that was created in 2004 as Iraq's first independent talk radio station. Radio Dijla offices, in the Jamiya neighborhood of Baghdad, have been attacked on several occasions. This priceless collection of artifacts in the National Museum of Iraq was looted during the 2003 U.S. led invasion. Thousands of ancient manuscripts in the National Library were destroyed under Saddam's command and because of neglect by the occupying coalition forces. Baghdad is home to some of the most successful football, soccer, teams in Iraq, the biggest being Al Shorta, Police, Al Qa Al Jaia, Air Force Club, Al Zaira, and Taliba, Students. The largest stadium in Baghdad is Al Saab Stadium, which was opened in 1966. Another, but much larger stadium, is still in the opening stages of construction. 
Britain, the city has also had a strong tradition of horse racing ever since World War I, known to Baghdad as simply as races apostrophe. There are reports of pressures by the Islamists to stop this tradition due to the associated gambling. Books. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.